And we welcome you in the video land as we start to get ready for today's service. The scripture lesson is 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 19 through 25. It seems a Sunday school teacher was getting ready to teach their kids about how to get into heaven. And he asked his class, he said, if I had a hundred million dollars, could I get into heaven? And they shouted, no, no, no. And he said, well, what about if I gave everybody land all over the world? Would that get me into heaven? And they shouted, no, no. And he said, well, what about if I went around and I brought food to everybody that was hungry? Would that get me into heaven? And they all shouted, no, no. And he said, well, what do I got to do to get into heaven? And one little boy jumped up and said, teacher. He said, what? He said, you got to be dead. The simplicity of children. 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 19 through 25. For it is the command, for it is commendable if a man bears up under the pain of unjust suffering because he is conscious of God. But how is it to your credit if you receive a beating for doing wrong and endure it? But if you suffer for doing good and you endure it, this is commendable before God. To this you were called, because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in His steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in His mouth. When they hurled their insults at Him, He did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were like sheep going astray, but now you have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. May God add His blessings to these passages as we seek Him in prayer. Please join me. Father, we thank You. We thank You that we are able to be here today and that the, the words that You have given to be spoken will lift us up, teach, and direct us, Father. We thank You for the ability to have a Bible, to read it, to gain from it, and to use it to shine the light of Jesus into the world. May it be ever so today as we seek a closer walk with Him, Father. In Jesus' name we pray, and all of His children said, Amen. Now, I am 52. Right? Yeah, okay. I'm 52. I checked my wife because I forget. I really do. I honestly thought the other day I was 53, but I'm 52. And there are a few of you in this room who are close to my age. And then there are those who are considerably younger and those who are older. So this is Jermaine. <laughs> like how I use that fancy word? And I got it right. This is Jermaine to my generation. And it was a phenomenon. When you got sick, what happened? Right? Middle of the school week. Right? You got sick. Mom, man, I can't go to school today. I got a frog in my throat. I don't feel good. You younger people, and I mean younger people, do not know this phenomenon. You knew what was coming. All right, well, she take your temperature. Moms could do that, right? Oh, my goodness, you got a fever. Dad puts his hand on your head. What happens? He calls to the mama. Hey, come here and feel this kid's head. I don't know how, what, what's going on. And mom runs in, and oh, my baby's burning up, and suddenly you're not at school anymore. And what happens? Now you get taken care of. You got all the good stuff, right? You got to lay in the bed for a little while in the morning, and Mama brought you in a bowl of cereal, right? And some orange juice. You had to drink plenty of orange juice. And then after about 9 o'clock in the morning, Mom, what? I'm tired of laying in bed. And Mama would bring you downstairs, and she'd lay you on the couch, and she'd give you a pillow, and she'd tuck you in. Along about 11 o'clock in the morning, she'd let you turn on the television set. Now, young people... 
And I'm looking at you, and there's other ones back in here. When we was growing up, we had three channels. <gasps> three! And then there's cell phones or iPads or this or that. And Mom would turn on the TV, and at 11 o'clock, the phenomenon would start. There you would sit with your little tray and your chicken noodle soup and a slice of bread and some ginger ale. And the price is right would come on TV. Oh, yeah, boy. You would sit there and they would bring out that stuff. They would bring out them cars and them whatever. And you'd sit there going, man, I bet I could win that. And they'd spin that big giant dollar wheel and you'd carry on. In 1972... It rewrote itself. It actually was made in 1956 and stopped in 1965. It ran out of viewers. It didn't hold the attention. It has the distinction of being the first game show to ever be broadcast in color on color television. But in 1972, they reworked it. On September 4th, for the fall season on CBS, it took off. And we all know Bob Barker long microphone, you know, the thing he held all the way down here and he talked at it like he was going to poke himself in the eye at any moment. And he ran it. And did you know, some of you may remember, that there was a half an hour nighttime version that came on once a week. Yeah! And then, uh, then it went to five nights a week at night until it ran out in 1980. And in 2007, Bob Barker retired. And they didn't know what they were going to do. They couldn't find anybody. It is believed that it is the longest running game show currently on television. And you knew that when that show came on, everything was going to be great. All your little friends was at school. We didn't have cell phones like you all. I love it when a young person gets sick nowadays. And I'm friends with them on some form of social media platform because you think the world just screeched to the end, didn't you? I'm so sick today. And they post it on there. I'm so sick I just don't know what to do. Well, you can certainly type it on there. I'm so sick I have a, I have a fever of 100 degrees. Cough, cough, cough. And people are sending them dumb heart emojis and broken hearts and tears and stuff like that. Oh, woe is me. I don't know if I shall live to see tomorrow. And the whole world knows that you're sick. And I laugh every time because I'm like, you, and I text people this, when they start that nonsense up, you are a wimp. Get up. But we all knew. We all knew what was going on. And, you know, when that, uh, hmm. well, let's, let's hold on here just for a second, shall we? Oh, I see fear in eyes all over in front of me. Oh, 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 what did you say? We knew when that music was coming on, right? Somebody was going to hear those words. Come on down. And today, we have our own version of The Price is Right. Please welcome in here today. Take us back to your mama. Please welcome in here today, if you will, she's a homemaker. She does things just the right way. She loves her cats, and her job is to drive her pastor crazy. Please welcome down to the front, Mita Ann Slope. That's you. Come on up here and stand over there. Yes, sir. Come on, man. Bring her up. Come on, ladies and gentlemen. And now for our next contestant here on The Price is Right, you know him. He's a, a man of dapper means. He always dresses the part. He's known for his knowledge of history, for being quiet and standing in the back. Call him on down, John Carroll. Come on. Give him a big round of applause. And our next contestant here on the Long Meadow Price is Right. She is always the driving force. She is beautiful, she is wonderful, and she is the kind of woman that everybody wants for their grandmother. That's right, she always has a kind word and has a pocketbook with a dog on it. Please welcome up onto the stage, Shirley Myers! Come on down! I love the looks on your old faces. Come on up here, Shirley. 
And today they'll be playing for prizes that you cannot imagine. And I'd like to say that today's version of the Long Meadow Price is Right is sponsored by the Spiegel Catalog. That's right. If you ain't got it, Spiegel has it even when you don't need it. You're about to smack me, aren't you? Well, I kind of like to. All right. Now, ladies and gentlemen, a panel of people have been selected to pick out a product that is worthy of the name, that is worthy of something that everybody must have in their kitchen. And your job today, within one guess, is to come within the prices right by one dollar, one high, one low. What are they playing for today, Paul? A brand new pack of eggies! That's right, no kitchen should be without eggies. This delectable product allows you to crack an egg in it, drop it into boiling hot water, and come back with a hard-boiled egg or a soft-boiled egg. Perfect to complement your breakfast treat. And now, to win the eggies, meet a hand within the price of what they sell for today. Give us a number. Everybody start cheering. Go. <laughs> How much do you think they're worth today? $2.50. $2.50. John Carroll. We give you ask you the same thing. What is the price of eggies today? Within one dollar, high or low? I'd say five, four ninety-five. Four ninety-five is the answer. And Aunt Shirley, Grandma Shirley, wonderful Shirley, don't smack me. What is your price for these lovely eggies? I'm gonna go low, two fifty. Two dollars and fifty cents. Well, you're all three wrong. <laughs> Aren't you glad you'll win these delectable things? The price today for eggies is eighteen dollars plus shipping and handling. Hey, let's give a big round of applause for our contestants. You may go back to your seat. You didn't win. You didn't guess the price is right. But thank you for playing. I have a parting gift for you. I had some candy, but I got it taken away from me. See me after church. You probably ate it. You're probably right. <laughs> I'm only going to put candy in my pockets that I like. <laughs> the price of eggies today, if you have to buy them, is $18. And we all know the story of the eggies in my house. You guys have heard the story, right? We still have them dumb things somewhere. Don't you ever buy them. The price is right. There was a man who passed away and he approached St. Peter at the gate. St. Peter says today, to enter in today, you have to have a thousand points. No entrance. The man said, well, what do I do? St. Peter said, well, start listing everything you've done in life and we'll see where you wind up. The man says, well, when I was 14 years old, I found the Lord, my Savior, and I got baptized and brought into the church. And I've been a faithful member of my church since I was 14 years old. St. Peter says, that is wonderful. Two points. It kind of shocked him. He leaned back for a minute. He goes, well, I married a Christian woman. And we raised up Christian children who all came to know the Lord at an early age. And they're missionaries and doctors and teachers and they're strong in the faith. And, and, and we have shepherded them along to make sure that they got that life. And St. Peter says, that is amazing. Two points. The man hung his head in shame. He said, well, he said, I run a very profitable business. And I donate 50% of my personal earnings and 50% of my business's earnings to the church for the growth that they may be funded, that the word of Jesus gets known. And we have built stuff because of that. And many people have come to know the Lord because we were able to do this great reach out. And St. Peter looks at him for a moment and goes, that, that's amazing. Two more points. The man leaned back and he says, I, I, I just don't know. I've done everything I can. I've listed everything I can. I don't know what else there is that will ever get me to the thousand points to cross into those gates. And he hung his head for a moment and he looked at the ground and he said, all I can hope for is the grace of Jesus Christ. And St. Peter pushed a button and the sky lit up and he said,
The price is right. Come on in. The grace of Jesus Christ. You know, there is a song that I love, and I know we sing it quite often here, and I can't help it because I love that song, and that song is The Wonderful Grace of Jesus. I even got in trouble at Mark Keener's wedding. Yeah, I'm married, right? Obviously, you all know because she's sitting back here. And I'm married to a wonderful woman who has no problem telling me everything that I've done wrong. And I mean everything. And we was on the way home from Mark Keener's wedding, and she goes, and she did it during the dirt from his funeral, sorry. We was on the way home from the funeral, and she sat in the back giving me that sign. Because they were singing, they, they were playing on instruments the wonderful grace of Jesus. You can't listen to that song without bopping your head and wanting to sing along. Wonderful, the matchless grace, the matchless grace of Jesus. You know, and I'm lost in that song and we got in the car and she goes, you were singing along with the music. Yes, I was. And when we listen to that song, the matchless grace of Jesus. How did we get it? There is a price. There was a price that had to be paid. In the Gospel of Mark chapter 10, verse 17, and as Jesus started in His way, and you cannot go to 2 Peter today without listening to this. A man ran up to Him and fell on his knees before Him. Good teacher, He asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And that's the catch, isn't it? Eternal life. That's how it's supposed to work. Eternal life. He says, teacher, he already knew. He already knew who Jesus was. He said, teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus looks at him. Why do you call me good, Jesus answered. No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments, do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not give false testimony, do not defraud, honor your father and mother. Teacher, he declared, all these I have kept since I was a boy. Jesus looked at him and he says in my Bible, and loved him. Because he knew what was coming. One thing you lack, he said. Go sell everything you have. Give to the poor. And you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. At this, the man's face fell. He went away sad. Because he had great wealth. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard is it for the rich to enter the kingdom of God? How hard is it? What is the price? That's in, in essence what is being said. We all know that there is a price. You know, I found this purely by accident, a little saying from P. Brand from his book, Fearfully and Wonderfully Made. You know, when we think about that rich ruler, we wonder just how rich he was. And this person wrote to the God that we all love, he said, Dear Lord, I have been reading and rereading the, re the record of the rich young ruler and his obviously wrong choice. But it has set me thinking. No matter how much wealth he had, he could not ride in a car, have any surgery, turn on a light, buy a penicillin, hear a pipe organ, watch TV, wash dishes in running water, Type a letter, mow a lawn, fly in an airplane, sleep on an inner spring mattress, or talk on a phone. If he was rich, then what am I? That's a good question. When we start thinking about the price, when we start thinking about the cost, maybe we don't think about it hard enough. Maybe it doesn't justify us well enough. Peter is laying it out in his epistles. He's, he's trying to get us to think on that line. 
when he says, for it is commendable if a man bears up under the pain of unjust suffering because he is conscious of God. He starts off laying out what the price is. He gives it to us. Listen, he said becoming a Christian is not going to be fun. Oh, it's going to have its moments. How many people remember that day you stepped up out of the water? Right? Oh yeah, that was a day to remember, wasn't it? You came up out of the water feeling different. But what was more important was everybody in a line up the bank or out of the swimming pool or out of the, the well in the basement or for that matter, if you couldn't do it, and I heard of a story where they just dumped five-gallon buckets of water on people. But when it was done, everyone was there because they had realized the price is right and you just paid it. You gave everything you have in that moment. Your soul. You. Yours. You gave it away. First Peter says, commendable for conscious of God. But how is it to your credit if you receive a beating for wrongdoing and endure it? That's like little kids, right? When you give them a little swat on the rear end because they've been acting bad. What did I do? As they stand there looking at the cookie jar laying on its side and all the cookies are out of it and they've got a ring of chocolate around their mouth. What did I do? Why are you doing this to me? I didn't do anything. That's not what he's talking about. Peter is writing to us to remind us of the price of who we are. He goes on a little further when he says, but if you suffer, underline, but if you suffer for doing good and you endure this, it is commendable before God. The price is right. To this we were called. You were called. Because Christ suffered for you. Leaving an example that you should follow in His steps. I love that part where He says, Christ suffered for you. It seems like long about the time Easter starts to roll in, we start thinking about it real hard. Oh, the pain, the walk, the crucifixion, the passion, all that kind of stuff. We start to really draw down and dwell on that. And then the rest of the year, up until Christmas, it seems like we as Christians, uh, our mind is occupied with how will we survive? Well, that's already been taken care of. Regardless of the pains, the ailments, the aches, the needs of this old mortal coil that gives on us, of this tent we call a body, we are going to survive. We are going to move on because Christ suffered for us. I got a cut here on my knuckle. Right there. Can't see it now. It's been a, a couple weeks since it healed up. I got me a brand new uh, four inch angle grinder without cords on it. Battery powered. Yeehaw! I had to have one of them. Why? I don't know. I already got a half a dozen grinders, but didn't have a battery powered one. Brand new. Got that thing out the box. Took it home. Read all the instructions, all the safety precautions. Don't do this with it. Don't do that with it. Don't do this. Right? And I get out there to the lawnmower and I stand it up on end because I got to grind the lawnmower blades. And it's got a guard on it to keep the thing safe. Well, no matter how I tried to angle it around, the guard was in the way. Now, we should have just taking the blades off the mower and stuck them in the vise and then ground them and the guard wouldn't be in the way. But no! What does Paul Leatherman do? G guard? Who needs a guard? There, now we can get at them blades, right? I'm laughing to myself, got my brand new grinder, ping, 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 and it goes right down the center of my finger. Blood comes out, carries on, oh my golly, it hurt. And I was unhappy for a moment. Because it was painful. And yet our Lord and Savior endured hours of His body being broken because God had decreed the price is right. 
Peter says he suffered for us. How many of you all would have looked back now if you'd had to go hang on that tree and said, uh-uh. This is my way into eternal salvation is to suffer all of that? No. And don't sit there and say, well, I would have done it, Paul. No, you wouldn't have. None of us would. Peter says Christ suffered for you, called you, that you may follow in His footsteps. He committed no sin and no deceit was found in His mouth. And Peter goes on to tell you that the price that He had to pay for us was to endure it. To absorb the threats, to absorb the beating, to absorb the vengeance, to absorb being spit on, and instead allowed Him to be with God who judges justly. He Himself bore our sins in His body on the tree so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. It is a reminder. It is a timely reminder of what price we must pay and how we must pay it. It is something that should walk with us every step of the way in everything we do. The price is right. Regardless of how we feel about it, regardless of sometimes we are exasperated with it, the price is right. And sometimes, even in today's modern times, we will be called into such a burden. A burden that looks like this. In 1708, Eight people, five men, three women, decided they had had enough. They wandered into that body of water right there in a town known as Schwarzenau, Germany. He said, we didn't like what people were telling us. They were teaching us against the Bible. And so Alexander Mack Sr. and the others went in to baptize in doing that, they created treason. It became larceny. It became everything against the government. And they put their own lives out there as the price. One would baptize Alexander Mack. It was never recorded so that nobody could be higher. And then he did the rest of them. And from that growth, in 1708, came the Church of the Brothers. A lot of growing pains, a lot of hurt along the way. But they knew the price is right to be paid. This morning on the way to church, I spoke to a great friend of mine that you heard briefly in the Joys and Concerns. His name is Barry Cameron. Barry Cameron has a disease in his lungs. It's cancer, but it's a very rare kind. Several months ago, they were going to replace his lungs, and they couldn't. And Barry Cameron was dying. His time is short. And when I talked to him this morning, I heard someone who understood the price, understood it was right, and understood that he will pay it. When he said to me, I know who my Lord and Savior is. I'm good. I'm sad because I have to leave. But I'm good. And I'm okay with it. Because Jesus paid the price for me. Brother Charles. Hello, Pastor Paul. Brother Charles. I was sitting with him when he would come to stay with us. I was sitting with him one time. And I asked him, I said, Why? You could build up a great big church and just have other people delegated. You go over here and start some churches in, and you go over here and start some churches in, and you do this. Why do you got to keep doing this? And he said, Oh, brother Paul. Oh, brother Paul. 
And that's how he would do it. He goes, well, no, that's how he would do it. He goes, because my Savior paid the price for me, I have to go out and bring the word. And when you come to Ghana to be with me, no, I'm not. <laughs> Let me tell you something, boy. When you come to Ghana to be with me, you will understand. You know, the man has malaria. He'd been bitten by almost everything over there they can find. I ain't got to worry about it. Because my old hide is so tough, it'll just hurt them. But he has lived in a challenging life. A man that powerful with that much passion could be anything. He could be safely ensconced in an air-conditioned church over there, preaching the word and delegating, but no. The price is right for him to go out and bring the word. I know the price is right. I'm going to tell you right now, truthfully, I would never, ever have chosen this lifestyle. I mean it. There is no way on this green earth I ever wanted to endeavor ever, never, ever, 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 never to become a preacher. No. Even the way I grew up, as you all well know, my family was there pretty much at the beginning of the Church of the Brethren. I grew up around it. No thanks. No desire. Don't want it. I know the price. I was more content to sit on that back pew and be there when it was convenient for me to be at church and read the Scripture and sing the songs and all of that good stuff. And I maybe, maybe I would even help out a little. Maybe I'd join a committee. Maybe if they created a committee for me. Uh, I was the committee known as the keeper of the lawnmower. Now, I didn't mow the grass. I just made sure it run for somebody that could. I was the keeper of the mower. I didn't want nothing to do with this lifestyle. I wanted to live my way. I wanted to do my thing. I wanted to continue to balance between sin and righteousness and serve two masters. Because the price is right. And I didn't want to pay it. And then I did. When I finally came to knowledge what I would be leaving behind, it was far more than what I had had. There's a poem about that. It goes like this. Perhaps you've heard it. When I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died, my richest gain I count but loss and pour contempt on all my pride. Forbid it, Lord, that I should boast, save in the death of Christ my God, all the vain things that charm me most, I sacrifice them to His blood. See from His head, His hands, His feet, sorrow and love flow mingled down. Did e'er such love and sorrow meet, or thorns compose so rich a crown? His dying crimson, like a robe, spreads o'er His body on the tree. Then am I dead to all the globe, and all the globe is dead to me. Were the whole realm of nature mine, that were a present far too small. Love so amazing, so divine, and listen to the price, demands my soul, my life, my all. Of course, you all know that as a hymn when I survey the wondrous cross. The price is right for us to give Jesus everything we have. For that's what He did for us. The price is right of Him to ask us for everything. To serve Him wholly, completely, and to step away. Because that is what He did for us. To you, to this you were called. Because Christ suffered for you, leaving an example. That you should follow in His steps. He Himself bore our sins in His body on the tree so that we might die to His sins and live for righteousness. By His wounds, you have been healed. To follow Him completely without question? Yeah, the price is right. 
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you. I thank you for all the things that you have given to us. But more especially, I thank you for removing so many things. We look to you, Father, as our guide and as our example. We are reminded of who you are, what you are, and what you will do for us. Thank you, Father, for the many things that you have, have given out. Thank you, Father, for the many things that you have taken away. Thank you that we have been taught what the price is, that it's right, that it has been paid, and that we can comfort in that glory by giving our own to it. And these things we leave behind at the foot of the cross and praise you and honor you through Jesus' precious name. If you have a particular need, I ask that you would come forward today. If you're out there in video land watching, know that there are people that can help you find your way to Christ. And may God bless and keep each and every one of you now and forever.